A friend of mine watches my channel and mentioned that he was in the market for an old tape deck like this one and asked me about Dolby noise reduction. And I mentioned to him kind of casually that I felt that it was nothing but muffled garbage because I could never get it to work right. Now I was being a little facetious, but at the same time, that has been my experience with Dolby noise reduction. Every time I turn it on, it makes it sound like there's a pillow over the speaker and I could never get it to work right. So in today's video, I'm going to try and do what I've never been able to get Dolby noise reduction to do before, and that's to have it not sound like muffled garbage. In all honesty, I'm not trying to bust on Dolby at all, because their invention was actually quite clever. This is a super simplified explanation of what the technology was doing, but essentially the goal was to reduce the annoying audible tape hiss on the sound recordings. The sound of hiss is not actually recorded onto the tape, it actually comes from the magnetic particle used to make tape as it passes over the tape head. Therefore, in order to remove that sound, you simply figure out what frequency tape hiss is and equalize it down. The problem is, by equalizing down those frequencies, you end up lowering the frequencies you do want on the sound recording. So, to remedy this, Dolby figured out that if you artificially increase that designated range of frequencies during the recording by the same amount that you would use to reduce it to remove the hiss, theoretically, you can drop down the same recorded amount during playback, thus returning the artificially boosted frequencies back to normal, and at the same time, remove the hiss. At least that's what it's supposed to do. But like I said, that's never been my experience with it, especially with pre-recorded tapes. Now, I don't remember there being a lot of pre-recorded tapes that featured Dolby noise reduction, but I was able to find a few. I find it interesting that the Dolby noise reduction callout is so tiny on these tapes, but who knows why that is. So let's use this Depeche Mode tape, which claims to use Dolby noise reduction B as an example. Now here's where I ran into a few problems after I uploaded this video to YouTube, uh, it copyright claimed three different times, because I uploaded it three different times, trying to slice this segment a bunch of different ways, and no matter what I did, it just didn't work. But I can tell you it did not sound very good when I was switching between B and C, and I didn't really have any better tapes to choose from, so unfortunately you'll have to take my word for it in this segment. And the reason I think it sounds so bad is because pre-recorded tape manufacturing was done with speed to stamp out product as quickly as possible. So audiophile sound transfer was not a priority to begin with. I'm curious to know if a modern digital quality recording made on a high-end tape deck using Dolby noise reduction will accomplish its intended goal. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I made a quick drum loop and exported it uncompressed at 256 kilobits per second to allow for a full dynamic range and give this the best possible chance. I chose a simple drum loop because drums have a lot of high and low frequencies, and I also added a bunch of reverb to test the loss of ambiance. I'm going to use a Type 2 Maxell XL2 for this test, and I'm also going to calibrate the deck to the tape for optimal recording quality. Again, I'm attempting to give this the very best possible chance of success, though I suppose I need to define what that success should sound like. And in my mind, I would expect it to sound exactly like the digital source. Like, full stop. Like, pure digital, no hiss. This deck only has Dolby B and C noise reduction, which is supposed to be quite good, but is nothing like the later version, and essentially dead on arrival because of CDs, Dolby S noise reduction, which I've heard is supposed to sound like what I'm hoping for. Pure digital, no hiss, like a CD. Now that it's calibrated, I'm going to record directly into the deck, not through any other components and not through the equalizer, just straight from the iPhone into the tape deck. First, I'm going to go with no noise reduction, then B, and then C. I'm also being careful not to exceed the Dolby logo on the meters because, according to Dolby, that's the peak volume you want to keep the recording levels at for optimal use of noise reduction. Okay, so here are the results. Alright, that actually sounded pretty good. Uh, again, there was no noise reduction on that, but there really wasn't a lot of tape hiss either, so not bad.
It's not bad, but it definitely lost some presence in the high end. To prove that the noise reduction was working correctly during recording, I'll play back the C version and switch between B and no noise reduction so you can hear the artificially boosted highs. So after doing my test of my own digital to tape transfer using Dolby noise reduction here, I realized that, well, I'm using an original 30-year-old plus tape with probably very much older technology that went from a tape master, no doubt, onto a cassette at high speed. I'm sure when they were reproducing tapes, that's how they did it, and if I'm not mistaken, that's probably still how they do it. Um, that got me thinking, well, what does a new tape sound like today? I know they're not using Dolby noise reduction anymore, but I'm wondering if a digital transfer, or at least a digital master, going onto a tape is any better. So I went out and I bought one. I got this Olivia Rodrigo tape. I want to see if a modern, modern recorded tape sounds any better on just regular non-Dolby than an actual original cassette possibly using Dolby does. So let's find out. I would like to highlight something that I found during the editing phase of this video. The tape hiss is visually noticeable in the audio waves, and it's more noticeable on this pre-recorded tape. Now that's possibly because it's a Type 1 tape, but as soon as I press play, the tape hiss is there. Now I drive alone past your street. For comparison's sake, I recorded from a digital source onto this Type 2 tape using the maximum recording levels set by the indicators on the meters. Now, while I can't replay a lot because of copyright stuff, I can tell you this. My recording, without using Dolby noise reduction, was far better than the pre-recorded tape from the record company. Set forever now I drive alone past your street. So where does that leave us with this whole Dolby thing? I think Dolby noise reduction was a clever invention at the time. Now we're talking about the 60s and late 60s, early 70s when this really came out. You know, they didn't have all those different types of tape types to choose from. Now we've got type 1, type 2, there was a type 3 that nobody really used, type 4 which was metal. Those were far better in the ability to record and hold music. And over time, we also had the addition of way better electronics, way better recording equipment, and the addition of like HX Pro. Now, does Dolby noise reduction do what it says it's supposed to do? And yes, it does, as you remember from the tests I performed. Yes, when you heard me flip from B and C to off, you could hear the artificially boosted signal. So it does what it once says it's going to do. The problem that I find is that you're kind of recording down at these Dolby double Ds down here, and I just feel that if you had more volume, you could end up keeping your main volume down, therefore increasing that signal to noise ratio, and then you'll have a way better recording, because I can tell you, this pre-recorded Olivia Rodrigo tape didn't sound near as good as when I did a digital uh, version on this tape and kind of maxed out the recording level. So if you're in the market for a vintage tape deck, I don't see Dolby noise reduction as being a thing that's going to should be making or breaking your buying decision. I think really the quality of the tape deck itself and your ability to record higher onto different type tapes is actually going to be far more successful than using Dolby noise reduction. It meant well, and at a time it was probably pretty beneficial, but as technology got better over time, HX Pro was introduced, tape types were introduced, better equipment just naturally happening over time. I think that's the real sweet spot for tapes. So if you really want to get back into tapes, maybe don't think so much about Dolby noise reduction. Just buy the best cassette deck you can, record at the highest level that your tape type will take, and that'll actually be your best result. If you like what you saw, 
please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.